Hello and welcome to Top 10 Features of ADS 2023. In this video series, we are talking about all the latest enhancements in ADS. In this video, we will focus on electrothermal simulation enhancements. And I have three main topics to cover during the video, which is going to be very useful if you are concerned with thermal performance of your design. First, I will talk about electrothermal for multi-technology assembly, where you might have used a smart mount to easily assemble multiple puzzle pieces onto a single design. Second, I'm going to talk about a completely LVS-driven electrothermal flow, which does not force designer to maintain same instance name between schematic and layout. So this is very powerful, especially if you use different tools to do different things in your design. The third is about dynamic reuse thermal model, which helps in significantly speeding up your time domain thermal simulation, such as using transient or envelope controller to perform electrothermal analysis in ADS. So now let's go ahead and take a look at all these key capabilities one by one. To start with, I will show you the multi-technology assembly, which has been done with the smart mount and how now you can perform electrothermal simulation. First of all, here is my MMIC design. And this design has been configured to be used as a smart mount P-cell. And the current configuration is bottom mount. But in your case, you may have a flip chip or different type of implementation. So with this smart mount cell, this IC is integrated into a package design, which you can see here. So if I press 3 to show you 3D view, you can see the package at the bottom. And on top of this package, you have this MMIC chip along, which is integrated using these bond wires. So that's the assembly, which is very easy to do if you are using a smart mount. And you, you can even have a couple of more ICs or a few more ICs which are using might be different processes such as you know gallium arsenide or something can be silicon and you can bring it all together very easily in ads layout along with your package design now this assembly has to be electrothermally simulated and for that i have this schematic design here where you can see i have place the sub circuit and I'm going to first perform an S parameter simulation for the entire assembly so that we can see the total response of our design. Here you can see the S parameter performance and for comparison purpose, I will switch on the history. Now let's go back to that multi-technology assembly design and enable electrothermal simulation. Now here while performing electrothermal, I have already extracted the reuse data, which is a static reuse data. And here I'm going to reuse that data for a faster electrothermal simulation for this particular demo. So once we do that, we go ahead and run simulation. Now, as you can see, unlike the earlier ADS releases, your electrothermal simulations will have no problem. And here you can see minor differences due to the thermal performance of your multi-technology assembly. Very useful uh, if you are very concerned with thermal performance in a high dense you know, kind of module design or, or layout design. Pretty cool. Now let's go ahead and talk about the second key feature, which is about LVS driven flow, where you would like to record temperature in cases where your schematic and layout um, representation of your designs are not matching. For example, here I do have a sub circuit on which I would like to perform electrothermal simulation. And in this case, I'm simply using a DC simulation. But if you look at the schematic here, you can notice I have two simple FETs with the name M4 and M3. Now, if you look at the layout representation of the same design, you will notice these instances are called M1 and M2. Now, in a regular sense, there is no synchronization between the two representation of the design. And if you understand how electrothermal simulation works, it primarily runs circuit simulation first, keep all the power dissipation noted, and then that information is passed over to layout where, based on that information, you perform a thermal analysis. After you perform thermal analysis, the thermal results are passed back to these models. And then we perform circuit simulation to notice the electrothermal 
uh, simulation effects on your design. Now, in this particular case, because there is no synchronization between the two representation, the electrothermal simulation will give you um, no, no real result. So how do you fix that? Well, now in new ADS versions, when you have these kind of cases, and these kind of cases are very common when your layout design is done in some third-party tools and you're simply importing it into ADS. Then there is no guarantee the instance names will be same. Now, in that case, you can simply go to Tools, ADS, Desktop, LVS. You simply run the LVS engine. Once you run LVS, now uh, ADS will create a mapping file between the instances in your layout and a schematic. And that file can be used in electrothermal simulation. You simply need to select this option, use name map file from LVS job, browse to this verification folder inside your workspace where you have the LVS job folder. And here, simply use this pin net job report file. And once you do that, you can go ahead and perform simulation without any problem. And now you can see the results, even if your representations are not synchronized completely. And here you can see temperature with different fingers on one of the transistor. And here is the instance M2 on design and what's the temperature on those transistors as well as power dissipation. So pretty cool capability. It will be very helpful in simplifying your job as the utility will automatically create the equivalent mapping file between a schematic and layout. Hope you like this new capability. All right, now let's go ahead and talk about cases where I would like to perform electrothermal simulation. And I would like to see how the thermal profile of my design changes with respect to time. And this is very common when you run transient analysis or circuit envelope analysis in ADS. And here you can see in the results, I do have two results overlapping. One using the older way where we were doing electrothermal simulation on every time step and at every time step, the thermal analysis was performed. Now that tends to be very time consuming depending upon how much long time domain simulation you would like to perform. Now starting with ADS 2023, you can extract a dynamic thermal reusable model, which can be directly used inside thermal analysis when, in, when you are using it with either transient or circuit envelope. And here is a comparison. You can see how close the results are, but the speed advantage is huge again. Now to do so, it's, the concept is very simple. Before you can run transient analysis with electrothermal, you simply extract a reusable model. So here, this can be done by a simple DC simulation where you have assigned your bias um, voltages to your circuit. And now in electrothermal, we can enable the reuse and extract the electrothermal data. Now in the past releases of ADS, when you use that option, you only get .rm file. .rm file was only useful for DC analysis or harmonic balance kind of steady state simulators. But those models were not possible to be used in, in time varying kind of simulations such as transient and envelope. But now once you run the simulation, you will notice two files getting created inside your data folder of the workspace. One is the older .rm file. Ignore the VLC icon here because .rm is associated with VLC on my machine. Uh, so .rm was always there. Now with 2023, you have .rcm, which is a dynamic reusable model for electrothermal simulations. Now, once you have that model, uh, the electrothermal analysis along with transient or envelope would automatically pick that. Now in order to allow uh, the electrothermal to use it, you need to simply create this configuration file with this exact same name and just put this variable in that file, reduce order model, and you can enter any non-zero integer. If you represent minus, minus simply means it will have higher order uh, model data at the higher frequency, enhancing the accuracy of your simulation. So once you have that file, you have that variable defined. If you run electrothermal analysis, the model will be reused and your simulations will run significantly faster compared to the earlier releases of ADS.
So that's all for this video. I hope you like these three key enhancements and they will be very really useful if you are running electrothermal simulations in ADS. Thanks for watching and wish you all the best in your design work.